Hello everyone, this is Chris from Spoon Graphics, back with another video tutorial for Adobe Illustrator and a little bit of Photoshop right at the end. Today I'm going to show you how to create an outdoors themed badge design featuring a simple mountains graphic and colourful sunset effect using a retro colour scheme. This style of logo is based on embroidered national park patches and has become a popular design trend for all kinds of outdoors, adventure or camping themed brand identities. We'll use Illustrator's basic shape tools to construct the vector badge design, then stick around until the end of this tutorial to discover an easy way to make your digital design look real with stitching and embroidery effects. But first, if you want access to a range of ready-made badge templates, or even the tool we'll be using later in this tutorial to create the realistic embroidered effect, sign up to Envato Elements. Envato Elements saves you time, effort and money with unlimited downloads of premium design and stock templates, including print templates, graphics, photos, fonts and now royalty free audio tracks too. Check them out today by hitting the link in the video description below. Begin by opening Adobe Illustrator and create a new document. I'm using a generic A4 artboard, but with the units set to pixels. Make sure the colour mode is set to RGB to make it easy to find some nice bright colours unless you're working on a real logo design project, in which case you might want to select CMYK so you can choose colours that can be replicated in print. First let's set out a colour scheme for the design. Select the rectangle tool and remove the default black stroke. Draw a small square just off the artboard. The colour scheme I'm using is based on a retro palette I found at Colour Lovers, which I then tweaked slightly, so I'll simply tell you the colour values I used. The first of the six colours is 40020 in RGB values. Select the move tool and hold the Alt and Shift keys while dragging the square to make a duplicate. Use the command and D or Ctrl and D shortcut on Windows to repeat the transformation to create six colour blocks in total. Select the second square and change its colour to 130055. 220, 35, 55 is next. The fourth colour is 255, 105, 55. Then 255, 160, 65. And finally 255, 255, 165. This colour palette transitions through a series of warm hues that are perfect for depicting a sunset scene. Select the darkest coloured shape to load its appearance, then activate the rectangle tool again. Draw a shape on the artboard as the basic container for our badge design. We can customise the shape into more of a shield graphic by switching to the direct selection tool and selecting the bottom two points. Click and drag the little corner widget icons to max out the radius, giving it a curved bottom edge. Go to Object Path and Offset Path and enter 10 pixels to create an additional border around the badge shape. Draw a selection across both shapes, then choose the Shape Builder tool from the toolbar. Hold the ALT key and click the centre shape to punch it out, leaving just an outline shape. Next let's create the mountain graphic. Select the pen tool and click points to draw a basic zigzag outline. The dark colour from the palette will still be loaded as the fill for this path. Follow the path back to the start around the bottom of the shield shape. You can make adjustments to the path by moving the points around with the direct selection tool. Select all shapes and activate the Shape Builder tool again. Hold ALT and click the areas that extend beyond the shield outline to trim them away. Click the lightest colour block to load its appearance as the fill. Then use the Pen tool to draw some abstract shapes to represent snowy mountain peaks. Zoom in and follow the outline of the mountain graphic. Starting from the peak, then add in some sharp triangular shapes on the way back to the starting point. Once again you can fine tune the result by moving the points around with the direct selection tool. Use the ellipse tool to draw a sun graphic that overlaps the mountains. Right click and choose arrange center bike to place the sun behind the mountains. To create the striped effect, go to object path and offset path. Visualize the size of stripe required, which is around 30 pixels for the scale of my document. Use the eyedropper tool to sample the next colour in the colour palette. Then apply another offset path to this new shape using the same value. I drop the next colour, then repeat the process of adding extra concentric stripes to use up the remaining colours from the palette. You can always adjust the overall layout by selecting all the circular shapes, 
and scale and move them into place. Draw a selection around everything, then activate the Shape Builder tool again. Hold Alt and trim away all the areas that extend beyond the badge outline. Temporarily select one of the light yellow shapes to load its fill, then select the Rectangle tool again. In order to accurately draw a banner area at the top of the badge, turn on Smart Guide from under the View menu. This will make it easier to snap to the points and paths of the badge shape. Use the Type tool to lay out your chosen wording. I'm using the font Brandon Grotesque, which you can activate from Adobe Fonts via the link in the description. With the Move tool active, hold Alt and add the banner to the selection. Then give the banner an extra click to make it the key object which will prevent it from moving out of place. Use the Align panel to centre up the text with the banner. If your text doesn't quite line up right, you might want to check out a relatively new feature to Adobe Illustrator. From the Align panel menu, choose Align to Glyph Bounds and Point Text. This will take into consideration the actual letter size, not just the overall bounding box. Give this text a fill using one of the colours from the palette. Select one of the darkest filled shapes to load its appearance again, then use the rectangle tool to draw a border underneath the banner. We want this shape to be the same size as the badge outline, so manually set the height in the top toolbar to 10 pixels. Don't forget to make sure the dimensions aren't linked. Zoom in and line up this dividing shape to the banner by snapping it into place with the smart guides. Let's finish off this sunset scene with some tiny star shapes. Load the yellow fill before also setting up the stroke with the same colour. Use the ellipse tool to draw a small circle. Then make sure the round corners option is checked in the stroke panel. Go to effect, distort and transform and pucker and bloat. Move the slider towards pucker to turn the circle into a star shape. The rounded corners of the stroke softens the points into little curves. Activate the Move tool and hold the Alt key while dragging several duplicates randomly around the scene. As a finishing touch, add one more outline to the badge by selecting the main badge shape and apply another offset path, this time with a small value of 5 pixels. Give this shape a yellow fill, then right click and choose Arrange Centre Back. That's the main vector design complete, but now let's tidy up the artwork. This doesn't affect the appearance at all, but it neatens up the paths into perfect outlines, with no overlap. Select everything, then go to Objects and Expand Appearance. Go straight back to Objects and Expand to convert any strokes into filled shapes. Click the Divide button in the Pathfinder panel to intersect the shapes wherever the paths cross. Right click and choose Ungroup to break the graphics apart into individual pieces. Now would be a good time to delete those colour palette blocks, so you don't accidentally merge them with the badge artwork. Select one of the shapes of the artwork and go to Select, Same and Fill Colour. Click the Unite button in the Pathfinder panel to merge all these shapes into one outline. Select another shape and select all the individual pieces with the same fill colour. Merge all these shapes into one outline too, using the Pathfinder panel. Repeat the process of combining each remaining colour into one shape. That's the illustrator portion of the tutorial complete, but there's one more extra step that will convert your clean vector artwork into a realistic embroidered patch. The aptly named Realistic Embroidery Action is available in the Envato Elements library, or individually for $8. Links to both places you can find it are down in the description. We need to convert the Illustrator artwork into a Photoshop compatible format, so go to File and Export As. Choose Photoshop PSD, then make sure the Right Layers option is checked. This action performs hundreds of steps to create the embroidery effect with just one click. Once you've installed the associated actions, brushes and styles, open your exported PSD in Photoshop. Give the canvas a little more space by enlarging it with the Crop tool. In the Layers panel, you'll see each colour has been exported as a separate layer, or at least it should be. I often find that some colours are combined into one layer, so a quick magic wand copy and paste job is required to sort them out. Activate the layer, then use the magic wand to select a specific colour. Go to Edit and Cut, then Edit, Paste, Special, and Paste in Place. 
Repeat the process so every colour has its own layer, then name each layer to help keep track. To use the action, select a layer then run step 1, setup and borders. Once this step is completed, go to step 2 and run the fill pass action. Repeat this step several times until the area is completely filled, or as close as possible. If you run it one too many times and get an error, I'll show you how to fix that in a minute. Finally, render the effect with action number 3 to give the layer a blue stitched effect. Make sure you rename the layer, otherwise the action won't work for the next colour. Repeat the process for each colour layer. For the darkest layer in particular, I ran just the setup and borders action without the fill pass. This will generate a different kind of embroidered appearance, which works well for large areas. If you do run the fill pass action too many times and end up with an error, it can be fixed by going to file and revert, then close this temporary PSB document the action has stopped in. Collapse the action steps, then continue with the render action. The embroidery effect looks good, but everything is blue. Turn back on the visibility of the original layers and drag the group to the top of the layer stack. Set the blending mode to overlay. Double click each one of the blue embroidery layer thumbnails to edit the contents of the smart objects. Turn off the visibility of the colour fill layers. While you're there you might also want to configure the other settings too. I prefer to turn off the drop shadows, border and cloth displace layers for a simpler appearance. Save and close to exit out of the smart object. Once all the layers have been reconfigured, the badge design is the appearance of a full colour embroidered patch. Rearrange these layers to make fine adjustments to the stacking order. The final result is a nostalgic outdoors themed badge logo designed with a retro colour scheme. Using these same techniques you can build badges for all kinds of locations. Check out my previous tutorial on creating a patch design for the popular tourist hotspot Tatooine. The vector art is perfect for logos, stickers and even t-shirt prints, but the design is really brought to life with the help of the realistic embroidery action, which gives the artwork the appearance of a real national park badge. If you enjoyed this tutorial or learnt any new tips and tricks, a thumbs up on the video would be really appreciated. Stick around for more of my content by subscribing to the channel, and be sure to join my mailing list at Spoon Graphics to download all my free design resources. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.